Right, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about um, about this. Now I've reviewed this before, and it's the uh, Zero Compromise Optic um, Z420, uh, and uh, the most common. It's a very expensive scope. Now the ZCO is uh, a combination of um, chaps that used to work for Shrovsky and Kallis. Um, joined up with chaps that used to work for Night Force in America. I set up a new company with the objective of making um, the best telescopic site possible, um, disregarding the cost. The cost was a secondary issue. Um, the main, the primary concern was making a scope that was the best um, that, that, that anybody had ever made or, or the best that they could possibly do. Um, as a result of that, this scope is staggeringly expensive, um, even more expensive than a Delta Wolf, which gives you some idea of how dear this is. Um, and basically, I put this on my Delta Wolf, I put this on my uh, Steyr, um, and it has also been on, on uh, some rim fires, my friend's rim fire, but mainly it's on my air rifles. And people say, what is the point in buying such an expensive scope to stick on an air gun? Why bother um, when you could put a hawk on and it would be just as good? And that is a fair comment to make, I suppose. Um, and they also question whether it's actually any good on an air rifle because it only parallaxes down to 25, uh, 25 metres. Uh, so deal with that first, the 25 metre parallax thing. Now, when they say that this thing will um, parallax down to 25 metres, they mean it will parallax down to 25 metres on the higher ranges of its magnification, i.e. 20 mag. Um, now, at 25 metres, there is no way that you're going to need 20 mag. The most that I could conceivably ever think of using at 25 metres is going to be 10. Um, and if you put this on 10 mag, it actually parallaxes down and gives you a nice clear bright image all, all the way down to about 15 yards. Now at 15 yards, even if it's got parallax error because it's parallaxing out um, to actually 25 uh, meters, it's going to be so negligible at that range that it's going to be just beyond ridiculous, less than a mil probably. Um, so it's going to be absolutely nothing at all. So it's totally not worth worrying about. Now, if it only parallaxed down to 100 yards, I could understand that that might be an issue. Or even 50 or 60 yards might be an issue. Um, because then, you know, you really are going to be struggling at 15, 20 yards. But when it parallaxes down to 25 yards, um, it's no big deal. And if you think about it, most HF HFT shooters... The vast majority of HFT shooters set the parallax on their scopes to about 25 yards or 30 yards because you're not allowed to adjust your parallax. Um, so that and they're shooting at competition targets. That sort of shows you how meaningless. As long as it parallaxes down to 25 yards, really, it's not an issue um, at all. Uh, and then there's the issue of the price. Why buy it? Well, it's the same with anything really. If you want the best, you're going to have to pay for it. And yes, it's marginal gains that you're paying for here. Marginal gains. But anyone that's had a look through one of these, uh, or any of the high-end scopes, be it a Schmidt & Bender, a Swarovski, a Carlis, anyone who's had a look through one will tell you straight away that, that the image is unbelievably good. The image through this is absolutely superb now i've tried to film through it um, to show you how good it is but to be honest it's a waste of time because the camera um you've then got all the lenses in the camera the photographic reproduction all the rest of it so you, you can't really without actually looking through one you can't really tell the benefits of one of these scopes but believe you me i mean i work in optics high-end electro military optics and this thing is absolutely superb. The image quality is incredible. It's crystal clear. 
no chromatic apparition at all, no distortion, even at the very edges of the, uh, the sight picture, uh, no tunneling on any of the magnification ranges. It optically is incredible. Um, the contrast is amazing. The clarity is amazing. It's just to look through one of these is an, a proper eye opener. Pardon the pun. It's phenomenally good. Is it worth all that extra money for that? Mm, depends. Depends on how seriously you take your air gun in and whether you want the best there is or not. It's like buying an air gun. You know, you can buy a cheap. Uh, second hand 40 50 quid air rifle and go out and successfully hunt rabbits and squirrels or you can choose to go out and buy um, one of the high-end Steyrs or a Delta Wolf or a Red Wolf or any of those or uh, one of the top end FX and spend a couple of thousand quid if not more or more um, and really it's marginal gains again you know you're talking marginal gains but it's the satisfaction of owning what you want and one of these is incredible. When you look through this, it's spectacularly good. But it isn't just that. Everything about the scope is beautiful, not just the optics. Simple, stupid things like the uh, zoom. It's so smooth. It's like silk. It's got just the right weight on it. So it makes it just perfect. There's just enough resistance to make it perfect. And there's absolutely no grinding, no grabbing, nothing. It's unbelievably slick and smooth. Um, the turrets, the turrets are incredible. These are the best turrets I've ever had. My, um, the turrets on my, um, oh, I've forgotten the name of the damn things now. It'll come to me in a minute. Anyway. These are the best, the Recon, the turrets on the Recon are phenomenal, really good. I like those turrets, but these are something else. They're big, they're chunky, but they're not too tall. Um, they give a proper good grip. They're utterly, utterly mush free. There's no mush at all. The clicks are so clearly defined. Um, you can hear them, you can feel them. It's really good. Push pull locking, locks perfectly. All the Graduations line up absolutely perfectly on it. There's no um, distortion at all or misalignment on any of them. The illumination is very good. The parallax wheels, again, perfectly weighted. Um, ju just an incredibly well made, beautiful, beautiful scope. So, is it suitable for air gunning? Of course, it is. It's a top end, top quality telescopic sight. It's obviously suitable for air gunning. Is it for everybody? Of course it's not. You know, that would be ridiculous to say that this is what everyone should aspire to, to put in your air gun. This is something that if you really want to push the boat out and go mad, then put one of these up. You know, you think about it, it's, it's not even, it is expensive, but these days, it's not uncommon to see um, really expensive telescopic sights on rifles. And in fact, if you think about it, compared to a thermal sight, um, some of the thermal air gunning sights cost exactly the same as this. And you can only use them at night, because in the day, I know you can use a thermal in the day, but you don't get the best of images and you can't use it on the range, because the target has to give off some, emit some sort of heat to use it. So, you know, when you think about it, what you're getting here is a phenomenal bit of kit. It really is. It's the Rolls Royce of telescopic sights. An Optics Warehouse um, stock these. And I think they're still coming with this um, one piece spur mount as well, which again is another fantastic bit of kit. Beautifully engineered, um, absolutely perfectly machined, CNC machined um, for your optical alignment. You know, this puts no stress at all on the scope. So is this scope suitable for air gunning? Of course it is. Is it staggeringly expensive? Yes. Is it for everyone? Most definitely not. Can you do the same with another scope? Cheaper scope, something costing a tenth of the price? You can use a scope costing a tenth of the price, but if you look through this and you look through one of them, you will be able to see the difference, I promise you. 
it's immediately apparent. Is it necessary? Not really. It's not an essential, but it is lovely. So thanks for watching, and that's the ZCO 420.